Hello, so I will be reading the next chapter in Alice's Adventures in Wonderlands. And this chapter is called Pig and Pepper, chapter six. So she stood looking at the house. Oh, and here's a picture to start us off with. She stood looking at the house when suddenly a footman came running out of the woods. Alice thought he looked like a fish. He knocked on the door with his knuckles. It was opened by another footman in uniform with a round face and ar large eyes like a frog. The fish footman handed a letter over to the other saying for the Duchess, an invitation from the Queen to play croquet. The frog footman answered from the Queen, an invitation for the Duchess to play croquet. Then they both bowed low and their curls tangled together. Here's a picture of them handing the letter to each other. And here's a picture of their curls getting tangled together. Alice laughed so much at this that she had to run back into the woods for fear of their hearing her. When she peeped out, the fish footman was gone and the other was sitting on the ground near the door. He was staring up at the sky. Alice went up to the door and knocked. There's no use in knocking, said the footman, because I'm on the same side of the door as you are, and they're making so much noise inside no one could possibly hear you. The noises coming from inside were very loud. There was a constant howling and sneezing and every now and then a great crash, as if a dish or a kettle had broken to pieces. Please then, said Alice, how am I to get in? I shall sit here, the footman remarked, paying no attention to Alice, till tomorrow. The door of the house opened and a large plate came flying out. Straight at the footman's head, it almost hit his nose. It broke into a million pieces against one of the trees behind him. Or next day, maybe, the footman continued as if nothing had happened. And here's a picture of the dish flying straight at him. Oh, there's no use talking to him, said Alice, and she opened the door and went in. The door led right into a large kitchen, which was full of smoke. The Duchess was sitting on a three-legged stool holding a baby. The cook was leaning over the fire, stirring a large pot, which seemed to be full of soup. There's too much pepper in that soup, Alice said to herself as she sneezed. Even the Duchess sneezed occasionally. As for the baby, it was sneezing and howling. The only creature in the kitchen that did not sneeze were the cook and a large cat, which was sitting near the fireplace, grinning from ear to ear. And here's a picture of um, what Alice walked into in the kitchen. Please, can you tell me, said Alice, why your cat grins like that? It's the Cheshire cat, said the Duchess, and that's why. I didn't know that Cheshire cats always grinned. In fact, I didn't even know that cats could grin. They all can, said the Duchess, and most of them do. I don't know any, any that do, Alice said very politely. You don't know much, said the Duchess. Alice did not at all like what the Duchess said and decided she better change the subject. Suddenly... The cook took the pot of soup off the fire and at once started throwing everything within her reach at the Duchess and the baby. The Duchess didn't seem to notice, even when a plate hit her. The baby was crying so much already that it was impossible to know if it was hurt or not. Oh, please be careful with what you're doing, cried Alice, jumping up. If everybody minded their own business, the Duchess said, the world would go around a great deal faster. And here's a picture of the plate crashing on her. Which would not be a, which would not be very good at all," said Alice, who was showing off a little of her knowledge. Knowledge. Just think of what a mess that would make, even having shorter days and nights. You see, the Earth takes twenty-four hours to turn around on its axis. Oh, don't bother me," said the Duchess. "I never did like mathematics." And she began rocking her child again, singing a sort of lullaby to it, giving it a bounce at the at the end of every line. The Duchess sang the second verse of the song and then turned to Alice. Here, you may hold it a bit if you like. The Duchess tossed the baby to her as she spoke. I must go and get ready to play croquet with the Queen. And she hurried out of the room. The cook threw a frying pan after her as she went out, but it just missed her. Alice caught the baby with some difficulty. Its arms and legs went in all directions. The poor little thing was snorting like a steam engine when she caught it and kept curling and uncurling itself out again. Soon she was able to properly hold it and carried it outside. 
If I don't take this child away, thought Alice, they're sure to hurt it. She said the words out loud, and the little thing grunted in reply. Don't grunt, said Alice. It's not good manners. The baby grunted again, and Alice looked into its face to see what was the matter with it. It had a very turned up nose, much more like a snout than a real nose, and its eyes were getting extremely small for a baby. Alice did not like the look of the thing at all. And here's a picture of her looking at the baby. If you're going to turn into a pig, said Alice, I'll have nothing more to do with you. The poor little thing sobbed again, or grunted, it was impossible to say which, and they sat in silence for a while. Alice was thinking to herself, what am I to do with this creature when I get it home? When it grunted again so loudly that she looked down into its face in surprise, the time there could be no mistake about it. It was a pig, and she thought it was silly for her to carry it anymore. So she put the little creature down and felt relieved to see it run away into the woods. If they had grown up, she said to herself, it would have made an ugly child, but it makes rather a handsome pig, I think. Alice began to think about pigs and such, and hardly noticed that she had wandered back into the woods. And here's a picture of her. Um, when she let go of the pig. She was a little surprised to see the Cheshire cat sitting on a branch of a tree just a few yards away. The cat grinned when it saw Alice. It looked friendly, but it had long claws and many teeth. So Alice felt it needed to be treated with respect. Cheshire puss, she began rather carefully. She wasn't sure whether it would like the name. It grinned a little wider. Would you, li would you tell me please which way to go from here? That depends on where you want to go, said the cat. I don't much care where, said Alice, and it doesn't matter which way you walk, said the cat. So long as I get somewhere, Alice added. Oh, you're sure to do that, said the cat, if you only walk long enough. And here's a picture of the cat and Alice. Alice knew that was true, so she tried another question. What sort of people live around here? In that direction, the cat said, waving its right paw around, lives a hatter. In that direction, waving the other paw, lives a march hare. Vis visit either you like. They're both mad. But I don't want to go among mad people, Alice remarked. Oh, you can't help that, said the cat. We're all mad here. I'm mad. You're mad. How do you know I'm mad, said Alice. You must be, said the cat, or you wouldn't have come here. Alice didn't think that proved anything at all. And how do you know that you're mad? To begin with, said the cat, a dog's not mad. Do you agree? I suppose so, said Alice. Well, then the cat went on. You see, a dog growls when it's angry and wags its tail when it's pleased. Now, I growl when I'm pleased and wag my tail when I'm angry. Therefore, I'm mad. Call it purring, not growling, said Alice. Call it what, what you like, said the cat. Do you play croquet with the queen today? And here's the picture of a cat telling her where is what. I would like to very much, said Alice, but I haven't been invited yet. You'll see me there, said the cat, and then it vanished. Alice was not surprised at this. She was getting used to strange things happening. While she was looking at the place where the cat had been, it suddenly appeared again. By the way, what became of the baby, said the cat? I nearly forgotten to ask. It turned into a pig, Alice said quietly. I thought it would, said the cat, and it vanished again. Alice waited a little, expecting to see it again, but it did not appear. After a minute or two, she began walking in the direction in which the March Hare lived. She looked up, and there was the cat again, sitting on a branch of a tree. I wish you wouldn't keep appearing and vanishing so suddenly, said Alice. As you wish, said the cat, this time it vanished quite slowly, beginning with the end of its tail and ending with a grin. His grin remained some time after the rest of it had gone. And here's a picture of the cat um, disappearing on the tree. Well... I've often seen a cat without a grin, thought Alice, but a grin without a cat, it's the most curious thing I ever saw in my life. She had not gone far before she found the March Hare's house. The house had chimneys shaped like ears and the roof covered with fur. It was a large house, and she didn't want to go any closer until she had grown about two until she had grown to about two feet high, so she nibbled on the left hand bit of the mushroom before she walked toward it. What if the March Hare really is mad, she said nervously. I almost wish I'd gone to see the Hatter instead. And that's the end of chapter six. This was a pretty long chapter. Um, but tell someone your favorite part of this chapter. Thank you.